When it comes to women, some of the most intelligent men will do some of the most stupid things. Proverbs 7 tells the story of a woman whose man was going out of town. In his absence, she steps out and lures this man in off the streets to her home. Now, the man that falls to his lust in this story is referred to as an ox being led to the slaughter. How sad that God compares men and their lust to a mindless beast that voluntarily walks to their death. It goes on in verse 23 and says, she forced him. And some say, see there, it wasn't his fault. But now, wait a minute. Before you get the images of this woman of ill repute, putting him into a full Nelson and forcing him into a, an alley side room and him screaming, no, notice how it says she forced him. It was with her fair speech and flattering words. So in a nutshell, she giggles a little bit, winks at him, tells him he's handsome, and he gets that dumb grin on his face that some guys get when lust bypasses the brain, and then he just follows her wherever she leads. The story this man finishes this way. It says, many strong men have been slain by her. You see, guys, this wasn't her first rodeo. And it's kind of sad, though, that this dumb ox of a man probably thought he was special. The last verse tells us that her house was the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Now, I can promise you one thing. There's no woman or man on earth worth hell. But my question is, have men become so shallow that just because a pretty face flatters them and gives them a little bit of attention that they're ready and willing to jeopardize and abandon their families, their God, and all that they value? And all the women are probably screaming, yeah. Listen, guys, no woman wants a relationship with a man that acts like a fool and embarrasses himself and others every time that a pretty lady walks by. No woman wants to be belittled or degraded by a man that follows his lust like a dumb beast. And I know not all guys are like this, but guys, come on. The next time that a wait, pretty waitress smiles at you and you get that dumb grin feeling coming on and you think you still got it, before you embarrass yourself and your family, remember, it's her job to be nice to you. And she's probably just wanting a good tip. Look, in 1 Kings, we read the story of Jezebel who married the wicked king Ahab. Now, she flooded the entire nation with immorality and false gods. Now, this old gal had a bad spirit behind her. And the Jezebel spirit is still very active in men and women alike. But the core of a Jezebel spirit is power, control, and lust. She was widely known and greatly feared, even sent one of God's strongest prophets, Elijah, running for the hills. Not only did she have an entire army of emasculated men that served her every whim, she ruled the entire kingdom through this puppet king husband. Now, Ahab was a strong leader, but when it came to Jezebel, he was just a dumb ox following this wicked woman to the slaughter. The first thing you want to know about Jezebel in 2 Kings 9 and 22, I believe, says she was full of whoredoms and witchcraft. Can't see whoredoms and witchcraft topping the list of things that a man's looking for in a wife. But that's what you end up with when you follow your lust instead of your God. The short version of this story, God had had enough of this wicked woman. So he chose a man named Jehu to kill her and all of her house. Now, Jehu had her thrown from the window to the dogs and they ate her in the streets. But listen what she did just before her violent death. While a hundred sermons could be preached about old Jezebel, the one thing that's always grabbed my attention, and it's what she's known for. In 2 Kings 9, it says that when Jehu came to kill Jezebel, she painted her face and tired her head. Now, so many people miss the real focus of this scripture, and they try to make it about something it's not. If you think God's problem with Jezebel was her lipstick and her hairstyle, then you've missed it altogether. Because the focus here is that that was her first response. You see, she didn't call for armed guards. She didn't go run and hide. She didn't grab her 9mm. She ran and fixed her makeup and hair. Why? Well, some people say, well, she was a queen. She knew she was going to die, so she wanted to go out in dignity, dress. No, 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 no. You see, I tend to think that she instinctively went for her most trusted weapon, herself. She was prettying herself up for war, hoping to use this man's lust against him. She was sharpening her sword, if you will. It was the one thing she knew had never failed when it came to confronting ox. I'm not sure what bothers me the most about this. The fact that Jezebel was so confident that she thought she could have what she wanted, when she wanted, simply by using her flattery, her sexuality, and her charm. Or that some men are so predictable and weak when it comes to lust that she was right about it. Listen, we need more men like Jehu. He wasn't perfect by far, but he refused to be another fish on Jezebel's stringer. I got a quick disclaimer here. When I say we need more men like Jehu, not advocating that we go hunt down wicked, manipulative women and throw them out of window to the dogs. What I mean when I say 
We need more Jehus is. We need more strong, godly men that will not allow their lust to destroy their families and their children and their church and then be led away from their God. The point of this entire video is this. Realize that this lustful spirit undermines everything that God desires for men and women alike. And it brings no glory to God when a man acts like a mindless fool following his lust. Satan will use any weapon he can, especially lust, to destroy you and your family and lead you straight to hell.